early September, I got the diagnosis that it was uterine cancer, and there was no doubt I needed a hysterectomy. Dr. Feltme offered me the option of having this done using a robot. The robotic surgery here at Brigham and Women's Hospital started in August of 2006. Uh, we've now completed over 80 surgeries and about 20 radical hysterectomies within those surgeries. That's the first time I broke down, the first time I cried and faced the fact that I did have cancer. She made me feel so comfortable, so at ease, and so sure that this was going to be okay. I had had bleeding pretty much daily and a lot of bloating and I couldn't go to the bathroom. So I called Dr. Gargiulo at Brigham Women and they took me in immediately. Over the last 11 years, I've performed uh, over 300 uh, laparoscopic myomectomies. Our patient population is unique in the fact that pelvic adhesions or intra-abdominal uh, adhesions can make the difference on whether they become or not pregnant. At the time I was 40 and I don't have children, but I thought I don't want to have that right taken away from me or taken away from us and it was very scary and, and sad. Hi, how are you? When I was told that I had a fibroid, there were three options. Because of the size of it, we could just leave it alone for a little while. Um, because it was there, we could remove it or we could look at the surgical options. Dr. Saruji talked about the robotic assisted surgery, which I was very excited about. Sheila had some fibroids that were likely impacting her fertility. Here at the Brigham, we are specializing in approaching fibroid surgery in a minimally invasive fashion. So we've been able to offer, in addition to the traditional laparoscopic approach, a robotic assisted laparoscopic myomectomy, which in the end, we're able to perform the exact same surgery that would be otherwise have done in an open manner, but with less blood loss, less adhesion formation, and a quicker recovery time. It was an easy decision. There wasn't much to discuss because it was the best of all options for me. Once the patient is put in the room, we position them in a special stirrup that holds their legs. We then put in a Foley catheter, a uterine manipulator, and then approach the ports where we place them very specifically according to the type of procedure that we're going to be doing. Once the ports are placed, we bring in the robot and we dock the robotic arms, the camera arm, and then each of the individual arms and place the instruments within the proper ports. After this is all done and we're set up, the surgeon goes to the console and begins to operate. You can see the ease with which the robotic instruments can dissect the tissue. Robotic surgery is laparoscopic surgery brought to the level of open surgery by reducing all the handicaps that laparoscopic surgery had at the beginning. Eliminating the problem with two-dimensional vision, eliminating the problem of abandoning all the natural wrist movements and in fact enhancing those. Once the surgeon is at the console, the hysterectomy is undertaken. With the hysterectomy performed and the ovaries advanced downward, we're able to remove the entire specimen through the vagina. That goes off to the pathologist who then look at this and tell us about the depth of invasion and what areas of the uterus are involved, how big the tumor is. And while that's being done, we're closing the vaginal cuff and then going on towards doing the pelvic lymph nodes. The surgery usually takes about two and a half to three and a half hours, depending on the level of difficulty. There is no doubt in my mind, after having performed laparoscopic myomectomy for over 10 years, that that's allowed us a quantum leap in quality. And I look forward to pursuing robotic technology for all aspects of uh, reproductive surgery in the near future. Sheila? Hi, can you come this way with me?
Definitely, I think that the robotic-assisted laparoscopic myomectomy would be considered cutting edge. Not all institutions have a robot, um, and not all institutions that have a robot are necessarily utilizing it in their with their reproductive surgeons. How did the incisions heal? I'll look at them later, but how did they heal? Beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> the recovery's been very, very good. I'm very pleased with having laparoscopic surgery because um, the incisions are small. And again, there's never been any pain from that at all. I was able to go back to work after a week. And today, I feel 150%. I have more energy. And we found out the other day that we are pregnant. And we um, were very excited, and it's almost a miracle. You know, I had a situation that was given to me, and I was going to deal with it. So I just felt that I was blessed with the surgeon and the staff at Brigham and Women's that I had. Dr. Feltmate called me with the results of the pathology. All the lymph nodes, everything came back negative. So it was just a small little chapter out of my life that was, I can't say enough about the care that I got and what a wonderful surgeon Dr. Feltmate is. We're pushing the envelope more and more each day with minimally invasive surgery and we're looking at being able to do more and more and I think as the technology improves as well, we'll be able to challenge ourselves with u using robotic assisted laparoscopic surgery for ovarian cancers and for other applications that are much more technically difficult and that soon we may have very few open surgeries and much faster recoveries for our patients in general.